hello to everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Armin Costa, and uh, I'm very pleased to be here to, today at this Open Nebula conference to, to present you the, the use case uh, of our applications uh, where we are using actually Open Nebula. So, uh, Eurac Usearch, Open Nebula, user experience and performance indicators for big data analysis for environmental monitoring research. Here I want to stress the big data because uh, we actually uh, have to deal with a lot of data. I will briefly introduce uh, EURAC. It's a private uh, non-profit uh, research institution uh, with uh, interdiction, interdisciplinary research institutes in the field of uh, biomedicine, renewable energy, uh, earth observation, alpine environment, and uh, it, it rounds pretty much around uh, the the team of mountain, okay? Uh, yeah, here there are the uh, research institutes. Uh, among those, there is the Institute for Earth Observation, uh, which uh, I'm representing uh, here, actually. So, uh, Earth Observation uh, so, um, does research on uh, environmental monitoring parameters, uh, which are best done via satellite data imagery or uh, sensor uh, measurements. And uh, with this data, you, they, we can derive a, lo a lot of products, uh, which then can serve uh, to, uh, to model, uh, to have some concrete uh, uh, outputs about uh, the status of the environment. As you can see, uh, water availability, uh, energy production, and so on. Uh, the, uh, the institute was actually born also with a receiving station uh, almost 10 years ago. So this is the receiving station which we have. We receive uh, on a daily basis uh, satellite data, uh, which we process, we store. Uh, yes, actually, also this, the systems which are uh, 10 years old on bare metal, we will now migrate them also to, to Open Nebula uh, Cloud. Yeah. Uh, within uh, this institute, uh, we have a dedicated group, which, uh, uh, which has a technical group of uh, engineers, which uh, focus on, on the data life cycle and the development life cycle, which is related to the analysis of, uh, of big data in this case. Uh, so we set up the environment, we develop tools, uh, we set up platforms in order to facilitate the, the research in this, in this field. Uh, and actually, this is a, a new, uh, a really a new, uh, so one week old, that uh, this group now, we will create a, a dedicated center, uh, which is a center for sensing so, 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 sorry, solutions uh, within the technology park. And uh, so our mission will be to handle these technologies uh, also then in an interdisciplinary way for other institutes, not only the... the Institute for Earth Observation. In this case, uh, you see we also deliver services related to data, uh, for example, also for uh, the, the ESA. Uh, yeah, so the data will, is often accessible also from outside via standard uh, web interfaces. And uh, this is also a, a component, uh, uh, a concrete requirement for our application. So we, we do not just uh, need to have the data in-house, but also to, to share it uh, uh, with others. This is just another example. We develop WebGIS applications. Again, also here, we have the necessity to expose uh, these big amounts of data in a performant way. Okay, uh, here are some uh, typical applications in the field of uh, environmental monitoring. For example, the generation of a snow map, which can then uh, lead to uh, hydrological models, uh, change detection via optical and uh, radar satellites. Uh, uh, an important component is are the radar satellites because uh, uh, you can also penetrate the, the soil, but this, again, they have very, are very high demanding in storage and computing, so that's why we need also a, quite a performant computing environment. And uh, another application is multidimensional image analysis uh, via data cubes. 
So these are just some screenshots uh, of satellite images uh, with high resolution. Uh, against no monitoring. What the research actually needs to do is to make analysis on this, uh, all this data. And this means that uh, they usually want to analyze uh, a whole time series of this high resolution data and to derive uh, the results. And uh, this makes it particularly challenging to deal with this data for the storage and for the processing. And uh, yes, here you have uh, again some quick screenshots about some applications, also uh, lens light monitoring via radar satellites, uh, and uh, image analysis via data cubes. As I already mentioned, uh, a big important is importance for uh, the research, in this case, is to be able to share these results. So not just to send uh, a link or so, but to have services, web services, which uh, allow to browse the data and to eventually analyze the data then in, a, in an efficient uh, manner. Uh, so the Earth observation application requirements are uh, pro the processing of uh, long time series of high resolution data. So it, we are speaking about big data. Actually, we have uh, almost uh, one and a half petabyte of uh, uh, satellite imagery of every, ki every kind. Uh, the image processing uh, usually requires a big amount of RAM, uh, not so much CPU, but uh, the more important component is the RAM because the images are big and so you need uh, most of the time to load the whole image uh, and, uh, and also have copies in RAM and uh, to process it in an efficient way. Uh, then, uh, yeah, uh, again, also to be able to share the data, uh, uh, so we, we need an efficient access, which uh, enables to access it also online via RESTful web services. And uh, another re requirement is to be able to, to process the data uh, where the data resides. So, for example, we have a lot of data, uh, or project partners have a lot of data on their storage. So uh, when we do research or projects, uh, uh, it happens that uh, they want to process our data and uh, we want to process their data. And this implies that it's not possible to copy the data. So uh, cloud federation and, uh, and cloud bursting is for us, for us uh, a very important component uh, to, yeah, to allow, to facilitate the the, uh, this uh, kind of uh, applications. Uh, so the computing requirements, uh, uh, again, big amounts of storage. Uh, files are big, so uh, huge amounts of RAM. Uh, high I.O. rates, so we need a, a quite a performance storage in order to be able to access uh, and process this data in a reasonable way, especially when we are going to process the whole time series. Uh, not just uh, as soon as we are, have a new image, and this happens actually quite often that we need to process the whole 20 years of uh, satellite imaging. And uh, we also need a high network throughput, of course, because it's anyhow the, the basis also to, to, for the storage system to, to work properly. So this is a, just a quick uh, overview of, uh, of the infrastructure which we have. Uh, we used to have VMware only in the past. Uh, since two years, we uh, happily use also OpenNable. I also successfully use OpenNable also in an operational, in an operational environment. And uh, yes, and now we, we are building up uh, platforms uh, also in, able, in order to be able to connect to, to uh, uh, what is defined as European Science Cloud which is the, the scientific cloud uh, promoted by the European project. And, uh, and we have seen that uh, Open Nebula is, uh, has, um, is very compliant also to the interfaces and uh, yes, so. And uh, yeah, why uh, we finally uh, got stuck to use Open Nebula uh, it was already mentioned uh, a lot of times because of, of the simplicity, the flexibility, because it's open, it's a growing community. 
Uh, it's customizable and uh, it has a very powerful uh, architectural uh, design uh, from our, our point of view, which, uh, which will enable uh, further development uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, a storage system, we use self-distributed storage. Uh, so we choose it uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, probably there are also now, nowadays better solutions. This decision was already done uh, almost also one and a half year ago. Uh, uh, object storage, uh, so the block, uh, the block storage uh, provide the very nice features and very, which work uh, quite well. And uh, the most important uh, decision for us was the CEPH-FS file system. So uh, for, uh, um, to be able to work with this kind of applications, for us it's very important to have a, a, a unique big file system because we need to process data, we need the same data we need to publish uh, outside, and so we do not want uh, copies. Uh, it's, it's not feasible to make copies of the data. So this was uh, one key element why we actually uh, choose uh, self storage uh, and open Ebola integrates this uh, very well uh, yes so uh, this is just a, um, the, an overview of the environment which we have uh, yeah we are not yet to the we are still to the 5.4 release but uh, we will plan to to uh, to migrate in future we have the system data stores on CFS file system and the image data store on uh, self block devices. Uh, these are the cluster resources. So we have uh, up currently one master node and five, uh, uh, five uh, compute nodes. Uh, we plan to extend uh, the resources uh, within the next year to, to double this, these resources, uh, yes. Uh, these are the, the resources of the self storage that we use that actually uh, uh, the self storage uh, so we we are ERAC research and uh, uh, the university of bolzano we have the same data center so the infrastructure is like uh, federated and so also this self storage is uh, then uh, expanded in this direction yeah, these are some technical details about, uh, again, the self storage uh, resources. So the perf performance benchmarking, uh, we try to analyze what are the key elements uh, for uh, uh, Earth observation uh, data. So the most important thing is the I.O. And so we, uh, we measured some, uh, some performance uh, metrics uh, with standard tools like uh, uh, DD, uh, uh, flexible uh, uh, I.O., uh, and uh, SysBench, and uh, yes. And then also for some applications uh, which are GDAL and uh, these data cubes. So these are just some, uh, some results. So here we, we had like a, a disk image uh, as self block device uh, with uh, Virt I.O. SCSI. IO threads because uh, yeah it was more convenient to use threads. These are uh, the perform the speed which we measured. Uh, then uh, we did the same with the Virt IO block. Uh, there was a slight increase. It was better in uh, in full write pass, actually. But uh, the else the other parameters were the same. Uh, this was like a disk image uh, stored on CFS file system. Uh, which gave uh, uh, these results. And uh, finally, uh, also, we did the same uh, benchmark also on CFFS, uh, so just writing the data uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the shared file system. Uh, for the data cube analysis, uh, we had, uh, uh, as example, file uh, data set uh, an image data cube of 1.6 terabyte on, on self-block device presented as a disk to a virtual machine. We, ex uh, we executed uh, this query in particular, which is uh, 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 in this case uh, a VCPS requ request. And uh, this query took 22 seconds. Uh, we did the same, uh, the same query on the same data set 
uh, but this time the data was stored on uh, CFFS and uh, it, it was slightly, slightly higher, so it's, it's somehow comparable. So although we need to, uh, to make uh, the tests uh, also in a longer run in order to balance uh, networking differences. So uh, the Outlook, uh, uh, Open Nebula fits very well the requirements for uh, research on environmental data. Uh, again, the reasons uh, we all know, <laughs> what are the reasons actually. Uh, what we plan is uh, to, to expand the, the networking capabilities and this, uh, it was already announced that it will be a fe feature of the coming releases. Uh, our plan is to, to expand and create an environmental data platform which will be actually uh, part of a project. So we will try to expand uh, the platform uh, inf inf infrastructure which we have, which we have and uh, to make it also accessible then to, to, uh, to outside users or uh, project partners or yeah. Okay, thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I think my time is over, <laughs> really. Yeah. Thank you.